Hi, this is Outdoors writer David Figura, and today I'm with Don Leopold, Distinguished Teaching Professor of Environmental Biology at SUNY ESF. Hi, Don. How are you doing there? Hi, David. How are you? Good. Today we're going to talk about something that happens every fall, fall foliage. Um, Don, briefly, for those who don't understand or don't know about why this happens, why do we have fall foliage every year? So in the, in the Northeast, we're blessed in having a lot of tree species that have the proper pigments to, to make the oranges and the yellows and the, and the reds that uh, we see during the fall. Now, the oranges and yellows are in the trees that have those pigments. They're in there right now. And if you could somehow strip that darker chlorophyll away from the, from the leaf, you would see mm. those colors. Nature does that by having decreasing day lengths and um, having much colder temperatures so that the chlorophyll starts to break down in uh, September, October. And then when you start seeing those colors, it's because the chlorophyll just couldn't keep up enough uh, production in order to mask those colors. Now you'll see some really uh, nice trees and shrubs with outstanding uh, red fall color, for example, uh, the uh, Staghorn sumac, which is all over central New York, spectacular. It looks like the fields are on fire. And that red pigment is produced anew in the fall. It's not there right now. And it's another type of pigment. Those, those pigments are called anthocyanins. So it, on one level, it's simple. On another level, it's, it's, it's kind of complex because of the, the, the chemical transformations that take place. Hmm. And why do some trees, it seems, have little or no color at all? Well, you know, if you don't have the pigments, then you, you can't you can't have the color. And so tree species have a lot of um, traits that are fairly well programmed. And one of many are simply does that tree species have those particular pigments. And so like the hickories in particular are in, in birches, they have lots of uh, the, the carotenes and xanthophils, which are the yellow pigments. So every year they turn a consistent uh, yellow color. They never will veer away from yellow. Other species like sugar maple and red maple, within a tree, you can have a single leaf that's pure yellow and a single leaf that's pure red. So they have oh. the whole range of pigments. And it's, it's, one of, it's one of the reasons why those trees are so um, favored by people who like to look at fall colors. And the reason why the Northeast forests are so spectacular in, this, in the fall. Now, I know um, I've seen this while out hiking, and I've had friends tell me about this, there's a certain species of tree, I believe a maple that's getting like, the leaves are getting devastated right now yeah. with all these black spots and stuff like that. What's going on there? Yeah, so Norway maple every year around Halloween, Norway maple, right when it's developing its beautiful sort of yellow orange fall color, develops these big black spots. It's a fungus and it, it causes what's called tar spot. It looks like a, just a patch of tar, circular. Right. Uh, this year it's happening much earlier, and there's another fungus disease called anthracnose that collectively those two diseases are defoliating uh, Norway maples, and not just in Syracuse, but I, I was just out in Ann Arbor last week, and all the, all the urban Norway maples there are completely defoliated as well. Wow. So it's a combination of our, our spring conditions, weather conditions, which then promote the development of these diseases, and it's the worst that I've seen in my, in my career. Any predictions, particularly with all the, the rain we've had lately and we're predicted to ha continue having, uh, how this fall foliage season is going to shape up? Well, you know, if anyway, there, if and, the, me, and will there be any geographic differences? Well, so the, the geographic differences through the whole country depend in part on the weather conditions, especially mid September to mid October into late October. If it continues to rain, one of the worst things for fall color to be maximized, one of the worst things are cloudy days and lots of rain. Um, the, the, as the tree starts to develop those fall colors, at the base of the leaf, there's a, a certain thing that happens. There's a, a layer called the abscission layer that starts to form, and that's what makes the leaf drop, drop off. And if you've got lots of rain and a lot of wind, and this ha happens a lot of October, so we get peak fall color, and then three days later, instead of having two weeks of the leaves staying on the tree, they drop off. And it's very disappointing. Early snowfalls can be really bad. We've had some of these October snowfalls and just the physical nature of snow will damage, will, will drop the leaves. Uh, if it's if it the best conditions for the fall, if uh, you, you can't really predict what's going to happen. But if this happens, I can tell you for certain that it'll be good fall color. And that's clear days 
cool nights, uh, very sunny uh, conditions, but, but the cool nights are very important. If the nights continue to be warm, that whole process is delayed by a week or two. Is there anything else I'm leaving out that you think our, our listeners would be interested in? In New York, we have over 100 tree species, and they all have some contribution to fall colors. And so if you think about other places like in Europe, uh, people don't travel to Europe to see fall colors. It's because the trees there, they have, they have a few trees. They have almost 100 in all of Europe but very few of them have the pigments. And so we, I think a lot of people don't appreciate how unique the Northeast is relative to its fall color show every year. It, it's, it's, a really, it's really special and I think we take it for granted.